Hello uh, and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk about books and stuff. Today we've been out and about, we went to Altrincham, uh, right the way across Manchester, where there's an awful lot of charity shops and bookshops and all sorts going on and we had a nice lunch and went with a bunch of friends and um, had a great time. Oh, untucked at the end of the day. <laughs> um, right, I've got a pile of nonsense to go through. Um, oh, what have I got? Look at that. Best bargain of the day. Season one and two of Twin Peaks, which I don't think I've watched seriously since it was on, when it was on TV during my final year of my undergraduate degree. And it was the only TV that we would allow ourselves during those heady weeks of uh, revision and exams and finals. <clears throat> so it's very nostalgic in, in many ways. I hope it, it um, holds up all these, these years later. People say that it does. I haven't seen the follow-up series yet. Vanity Fair. Oh, yes. £1.25, can you believe it, for two seasons? And the same price for Vanity Fair from 1999, which I watched in 1999 when I was a lecturer. I'd been a lecturer at UEA for a couple of years by then, and this was my Sunday evening treat, this uh, kind of rumbunctious version of Vanity Fair. Thinking back, it was only... Uh, seven years after Twin Peaks. Between those two times, it seems like a lifetime, my whole twenties. Anyway, and the Gilmore Girls, season one. I've seen some of this on Netflix a number of years ago. I think it was Netflix. And I liked it. I like anything with Melissa McCarthy in. And she's in this. Uh, I liked uh, what I saw of this and, and uh, these things these seasons of sets that are now on streaming services are available uh, quite cheaply now. So I'd rather have the physical objects to watch. I've been cutting down on my streaming stuff. I cancelled Netflix last year. I cancelled Disney this year because, frankly, it was shite. <laughs> That's a bit, a bit much, maybe. But there wasn't much I was watching on it. And our older TV, they wouldn't let you cast onto it in the same way. They made it more complicated. They always want you to buy more and bigger and more elaborate stuff more often. And it's like, well, bugger that. I shall watch old-fashioned media in my own old-fashioned way, thank you, Disney and the rest of you. And some of the Disney stuff that was coming out wasn't quite what it had been. I remember the heady days of Netflix and Disney when I first got these things, when it was all Grace and Frankie on Netflix or... Um, Loki season one <laughs> and um, uh, the early Star Wars TV show. It's only a couple of years ago, but things have gone downhill, I think. Anyway, books. <laughs> Stop bloviating about TV. My tea's gone cold. You might hear the oven going. I'm heating stuff up. I'm heating lasagna for dinner. Right, I'll, I'll whiz through the books I bought today. They were all very cheap, mostly about 50 pence each. Humphrey Carpenter did this. I remember this being around. It's uh, Shakespeare without the boring bits. It's a series of sketches and parodies uh, that Humphrey Carpenter wrote. Now, Humphrey Carpenter was brilliant. He was a biographer. He wrote books about the Inklings, about C.S. Lewis, about Spike Milligan, and about the geniuses of 1920s Paris, being geniuses together, one of my favorite biographies. It's very witty. And um, he also wrote a series of children's books about Mr. Majika, the teacher. And he wrote, uh, best of all, he wrote The Captain Hook Affair, which was a children's book which I read when I was nine or ten about a little girl and a boy who can bring characters to life from classic children's literature. He was a literary um, and comic genius, I think, Humphrey Carpenter. And... Um, I'm looking forward to exploring his parodies of Shakespeare. Now, maybe something I didn't need, perhaps, because I've bought many of these before, but look, four. I'm going to hold them closer to the camera. Four Hardy Boys Armadas from the 70s when um, I used to get them out of the library. And they'd be these copies, but with those um, plastic covers on. So they'd stick together. And you'd have to peel them apart. 
the Hardy Boys, of course, um, were extremely homoerotic. Look at these covers. I see now what my what my nine and ten year old self was seeing, <laughs> in some ways, unconsciously. Uh, okay, number nine, the clue of the screeching owl. I might have some of these. I'm not sure. I bought a number seven. The mystery of the melted coins looks familiar. Uh, nineteen, the sign of the crooked arrow. And the twisted claw, which was on the top, and the best one ever, because it had jaws on the front, obviously. I read many when I was a kid. I loved them, and they were tacky and hilarious, and mysteries weren't terribly hard. And um, I read them as much as I read Terence Dix's Doctor Who books, and I took them out of the library. They were 25p in um, Armada, in... Uh, oh, it's 74. These are, look at that, heifers. Book department, first floor in, I don't know where that is, Cambridge. I love finding bookmarks in things. I found some corkers recently. Right, here's a series I didn't buy at the time in 2009, a Doctor Who series, written all by friends of mine. This one's Jacqueline Rayner. It's number eight in the Dark Smith Legacy, Pictures of Emptiness. I forget how many there were in this. I was terribly jealous <laughs> because Justin Richards, Steve Cole and Jack were doing these books that included bits of science and fact and, and they seemed uh, really interesting. I don't know why I didn't read them. Maybe they were too gamey for me. I thought they were kind of find your own adventure, which I was never interested in. If I wanted to find my own adventure, <laughs> I'd go and have an adventure. Anyway, they were quite short, um, and they all connected, and I wished afterwards that I'd, I'd actually invested in them, and I didn't. So I'm going to try and collect them uh, as I explore the charity shops of Manchester. The illustrations were good. They were kind of dark and gloomy. It was everything. They looked like everything I thought um, these more recent multi-platform Doctor Who stories were supposed to be. Um, right, Tessa Hadley, After the Funeral. This is her collection of short stories that came out last year. She's someone I've read a bit in The New Yorker. I've never read a whole novel by her, though I do have some knocking about in the house. I have had loads of recommendations for her and her work. Um, this is an immaculate copy for £1.50. It's kind of ridiculous. It's only from last year. Another novel I've been waiting to read for a while, didn't pick up at the time, Anne Glenn Connor. I read her, um, her book about the royal family a number of years ago, and I hate books about the royal family. I'm not bothered about the royal family, but I loved her book, Lady in Waiting. And this is her first novel, a mystery novel. Murder on Moustique, which looks camp and tacky as all get out. I'm looking forward to it. I think Jeremy's just come in <laughs> wanting his dinner. Fern Britton, who I was talking about, and her first novel. This is her cookery book from a number of years before, which looks entirely sensible, as you would expect. Go away! <laughs> right, I'm going to finish up because I'm going to do dinner. Jeremy's creeping about very um, nicely. Shirley Hughes. This is a lovely, lovely picture book, and I remember this coming out. The Lion and the Unicorn, which is a, a wartime story about the Blitz, really, really lavishly illustrated. Very kind of um, old-fashioned in so many ways. Not many books like this now. Yeah, I think it looks wonderful. Uh, <laughs> my last thing I'm going to talk about is this. More fun to make, which is a frankly terrifying book of make and do from the 70s. Everybody I was with shrieked and threw, flung up their hands at how horrible it was. Look at the doll on the back. She's got a feather duster and she looks evil. Everything in it is a bit... Terrible. 
it's a Hamlin book. And as I've said before, Hamlin books were always um, amazing, I thought. <clears throat> Fun with spatulas is chapter one. And look, you can make a sausage dog that uh, you can hang keys from. Everything in this is absurd, and I love it. <clears throat> Things that nobody in their right mind would want in their home. Look at that. It's a pleasure to write with a cat. A pen with a cat on its top. And a duck. Um, and that's just... It, it's a different era. Uh, it's a simpler time. Look, a magazine holder. The kind of things you'd make for relatives and they'd be delighted. A string holder. It is a different world, a simpler world. And I do wish we lived in it. <laughs> The Helpful Frog and a Crocodile, both hideous, um, a pretty bag. The Gift Baby and the Housewife Doll. Look at the house, there's the Housewife Doll again with the feather duster and the baby with pins stuck into it, like some horrid voodoo thing. Yep, the Stamp Collection Holder. And look, you can always find a place with useful and attractive bookmarks. And they're hideous. <laughs> Made in a minute. Well, you can tell. Oh, anyway, that's my selection of books for today um, from our trip out. Thank you for watching again. And um, I'll see you again soon in my next episode. We're going to get our tea now. <laughs> Goodbye.